Now, I'll start the recording. And um, yeah, as I said, feel free to jump in anytime and ask any questions or shoot me a chat uh, message and I'll get to it. Um, so what we mean by that in terms of once we've gotten that estimate done, as I was just saying, is that get this PowerPoint to go to the next screen. Um, everything then drives from there. So we can, if we lose the job, we've already got the estimate value. We can track, we know who it was uh, quoted to, we know how much it was for. Um, we can then basically work out win-loss ratios from that. You know, how many did win, how much did we lose, the dollar value of those, what clients are buying our services, which ones aren't, which sectors, anything else. Uh, we can also derive from that estimate and the schedule in that estimate uh, a cash flow forecast. One of the big changes from Unify 16 to 17 is that there's two scheduling uh, tools around the contract, um, both being upgraded to mimic more from the cost and revenue modules. But um, you can now have a different profile of effort, which is obviously logical to, to when cash is going to come in the door. So that's the big key change that's enabled this virtuous nature. So we'll demonstrate both of those bits. If you do win the job and you've got your uh, contract uh, estimate in the system, that will automatically flow, flow through to people's timesheets. So people can automatically then timesheet to those contract deliverables that you've established in the estimate. There's no more work needed to be done to set up the job. It's already set up from the estimate. Um, those timesheets allow actuals to come in against those contract deliverables and um, people are able to estimate how much is remaining. We can compare that to the original budget in the contract and start to get an idea of profitability. Those timesheet hours also come into the new invoicing subnav and uh, we can review those hours and work out what we can build depending on the type of contract. If it's milestone claiming, we can look at the comments against the contract deliverable to see if we can claim a milestone. Uh, we can look at the own value profile of the, of the um, uh, to see if we've got anything we can invoice there. Or if it's a schedule of rates, we can just base it off the amount of time spent on the job and it's all integrated into that one screen in the invoicing screen. Uh, I've mentioned earned value a few times. So you can then um, you know, assess the earned value that you've gotten from that actual timesheet entry. How far have you progressed along the deliverable? So you may have a hundred hours estimate. You may have done 50 hours of actual. You think that'd be 50% progress, but you might only be 30%. That means you've only earned 30% of the job. You have a difference between 30 and the, and the 50. You may have only expected to be 30%. That's the schedule. So you've got a schedule, you've got an actual, and you've got an earned value. And then once you've got that earned value analysis, that'll enable you to both update the effort and update the cash flow of that job in the contract against the same deliverables that you set up in the estimate. And hence we're back to kind of point three again, and the cycle is uh, ongoing um, through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine till the job is finished. So hopefully that makes sense from a conceptual point of view. What I'm gonna do now is show that through the interface with a bit of luck. Wish me luck, you guys. Uh, just to zoom in a bit so it looks a bit better on the screen, hopefully. Uh, so hopefully the people on the call are familiar with Unify, the modules across the top, the project filter and the subnav. Um, one, the first thing I'm going to show you, if you're a system admin, you'll be able to access this information, but it's, a, it's important to be aware of it from a project manager perspective um, or for those who do your bidding project directors, uh, business development managers, whoever they are that, that build up your estimates. Um, you can set up in Unify, and this is a crucial element to this uh, thing working. In the configuration, if I scroll down to resources, um, sorry, I just got a text uh, that I thought I better check. Thought someone might have been trying to get into the webinar. Um, yeah, when you go into uh, the resources module of the configuration, you've got this thing called resource rates, and we've got this column called classification. Essentially, in Unify, there's two types of roles a person can have. They can have a role on the job which might be project, you know, job captain I've heard in some companies, project lead, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then they'll have a role in the company. They're a, a draftsman, a senior project manager, a, a quantity surveyor, a, as you can see here, the different, you can completely make up whatever they are. And then what's important for this in terms of estimating purposes is that you can then put a sell and a, and a, and a cost rate into the system, a charge and a cost rate. And so that's gonna use these charge rates to build up your price that you're gonna to sell to your customers when doing the estimate. And you don't actually need to know who is going to do the job. You just need to use these classifications to build up that estimate. 
So that's an important thing to set up. Now I'm gonna go through those nine steps essentially that were in that uh, PowerPoint slide. So firstly, I'm gonna to go to the contracts module from where I am and we've created something virtuous, this virtuous ERP webinar. And I don't wanna bore you by keying stuff in. So we've kind of baked the, baked the cake already. Uh, we're doing architects today, uh, but any consultant practice in any type of industry really could use these concepts. It's because uh, you create the work breakdown structure. Now, if you developed a standard one, um, you know, you did the Reba architectural structure to all of your quotes, you would just basically copy a project that's standard. And um, that would set up the structure that you're, you're already seeing, except for the people who are assigned. So in this particular uh, screen, you can see that um, I've got four contract deliverables. We've got a, level, a, a depth level over here. We've just got the one level. You could have uh, more by drilling in uh, on these particular tasks and adding extra tasks that you might want to build up here, but just keeping it simple for this uh, demonstration. Then what we have underneath it is the assignments that have been put to these roles. Now, they don't have to be people. So in this instance, I'm going to go into detailed design. And just, uh, you can see uh, over here, there's a filter. So I just clicked on, so you can see we're in um, architectural design deliverables and we've got this classification and people filter here. So as we go down the screen underneath detailed design, you've got admin support is a classification, drafting manager, then you've got Annie Lennox in there. So she's actually a drafting manager. So it's just showing you who fits into that classification. But if you don't have anyone allocated there, it'd just be a flat line of classifications like this. So now there's no people and you would go through and go, okay, we need another 85 hours there for that. Um, we need 120 of those persons on this, people on this task. We need a project manager reviewing it all. Um, we need that person reviewing it as well. And we hit save. And now we've basically built up an estimate for that particular task of $43,000. We don't have anyone involved and um, if I click back up, you'll get that uh, list of classifications there with the hours. Now, um, post-contract, you might wanna put people onto these particular roles. You may not. So people who are in drafting manager, so Annie would be out of timesheet to detailed design, even if I don't allocate her to that project because she's in the classification called drafting manager. However, it's been uh, reliably informed by someone on the webinar today, thank you very much, that the standard rates of classification can differ quite dramatically to actual rates. So when you get into post-contract, you might want to then reallocate. So what you would do then, is you click on the little person over on the right-hand side again, and we'd go both this time so we can see who we're picking up. And in this instance, basically what I want to do is untick drafting manager type 85. If you've got a pool of people, you need to do some mental arithmetic and apportion the 85 across the different people. You can still have drafting manager on and just have say 40 and 45 and still not know who's going to pick up that other work. Um, it's up to you. And also depends on how detailed your, your work breakdown structure is. But um, if I then tick any in that, it'll basically then remove the 85 from the drafting manager and it's reallocated to Annie. So now Annie has, has that um, there. We can do the same for Bernard. Um, and for Joe Blogs, there. And so now we've only got lead draft person, which we don't have anyone on the team in that role. So you'd have to allocate someone to the project team who's a lead draft person. Um, it's probably worth demonstrating something around that as well. Uh, when you're in the um, resource pool, at the moment, one of the things we're looking to improve on is when you're in all projects, you can't actually see those classifications very easily. There's no filter for it. There should be a filter somewhere here. But the search does work. So if I go cost manager, uh, these are all my cost manager classification people. You can see it's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the pool. And if I randomly open them and have a look, you'll see on the rate history, for this is for Blake, um, he's a cost manager. And if I go Clint, this is Clint Martin, go rate history, cost manager. So if you're searching for people in certain roles, you can use the search function, but we will get better filtering in there for that too, um, to know who you can add into that role that's missing. All right, so go back to my contract now. So back into the contract architectural design. I've uh, got two deliverables uh, resourced up now. Um, if I go to the schedule subnav now, this is where I'm going to do two types of scheduling. I'm going to schedule cash flow and I'm going to schedule effort. Um, 
And so when I go into the schedule, it's defaulted to effort. Um, we're going to go to cash flow first. So there's a view here that toggles between the two different cash flows. Um, there are ways to port from one to the other if they're the same profile. So you can schedule in one and do the profile across. Um, but typically that's not going to be the case. Or often it won't be. Uh, in cash flow, one of the common ones you'll probably use is percentage. And so what this enables you to do, you can see concept design's already been phased. Its total is twelve thousand um, dollars. You've got twenty percent, thirty percent, and fifty percent um, phasing of this. So what I'm saying here, guys, is that I've actually finished my estimate. It was fifty-three thousand dollar job. Um, that's what I'm quoting uh, for this particular bid. I didn't actually finish the other deliverables, but you can imagine. Um, you know, you've seen the process of doing that. And then I'm basically putting in here the profile of how I'm going to uh, milestone claim. So in the contract, you might have negotiated a 20% on, on start. You're expecting to start in July, um, a 30% on draft, and you think that's going to happen in August, and a 50% at completion, which is going to happen in September. So you just type 20, 30, 50, you hit save, and it basically works out what that, um, what that cash flow profile will be. Alternatively, you can schedule out um, and there's going to be more features similar to the revenue uh, phasing in here over time um, to auto phase that particular one you can see you've got different algorithms you can use on that they'll, they'll extend over time as well and so now it's still showing the percent of it but it's used uh, the month by month methodology to linear phase that particular contract deliverable um, so now I've got a cash flow profile for the $53,000 in my, in my business for that project. And if I go to effort, the difference there is that we're now looking at hours. We can still do percent if we want to do it manually. And so if I was to come in here and say, okay, this is going to be 10% uh, of Annie's time, 25% uh, of um, there. And then what have I got? 65% left and um, et cetera, et cetera. There's options to fill down profiles and things like that, but um, I'll just do back, we're back ending this effort profile. So you can see the effort profile is actually not that badly aligned to the milestone profile, but it doesn't have to be the case and often won't be the case. And uh, so that's now um, phased out the 85, 24 and 32 hours based on those percentages, we hope, eventually. And if you toggle back to hours, it'll then show hours there. And um, the key bit about that, the key bit that then pushes this through to the next phase of what we're talking about is I can now run cash flow reports in my business. And you know, if every project has done that basis, I'll know. For new jobs that you haven't won yet, there's a probability adjustment factor that will be applied to these algorithms. So long as you use the auto phasing, it'll then apply an adjustment factor if you're 50% think you're going to get it, it'll do it to both effort and and the and the dollars. And so you'd you'd have a you'd only have you know 20 hours, five hours, and 20 hours for Joe and Bernard and Annie. But then what happens is it actually pushes then into the resource planning. So you can see here that the resource profile has already been established and the new hours came in on the forecast that I just put in um, in the demonstration just then. So originally we only we were matching but I've just added a whole heap of um, time. Whenever you're doing something in the contract, if it's pre-contract and you haven't won it yet, it goes in as a, as a budget item, you can then copy that. So if I was to select this, I can copy budget or I can re-baseline, depending on what phase you're in of the life of this project. We've already won this job. So any re-forecasting is going on the forecast line and, and it's, it's then being able to be compared to the budget. But having said that, you can also click that and click re-baseline and we've now got uh, the, the actual forecast matching the budget. And so with no extra effort, just that schedule in the contract, it's driven a project by project resource plan uh, for people. Um, and again, if we'd stuck the classifications and we schedule classifications only, you could then have a look at how many cost managers or drafts persons or uh, project managers you need in your business based on your current uh, both bids and risk adjusted profiles of bids and committed work. Um, so project the idea is project managers are doing this task and then portfolio managers are looking at the reports that I'm going to look at in a moment. So then that's set, the, set up the, the sort of system to track. This is how we're going to track our projects. Uh, then we've got to do stuff. And so in timesheets, I'm Joe Bloggs. You can see Joe Bloggs there. Um, he's looking pretty healthy. And 
here's my timesheet. Um, if I just go to a month that, uh, here we go. It's a little bit, it's only a little bit early. We, we say we won the job earlier than we thought and I started working on it here. You can see that I had concept design allocated to me. Um, I also, since this uh, setup, I've had um, the detailed design as well. So you can see that's come in with how many hours that I've got available to me. And that's in there now. Hopefully wouldn't be working on that particular deliverable because I haven't done concept design yet. And I go in and I do my timesheets and I am happy with that and I submit and that timesheet's now done. Annie would have the same tasks able to be added. Uh, so virtuous, but her hours, say 85 instead of 40 come in there. Um, and then you'll see with that, if I come in and nah, I did it in the wrong, I have to redo it again. Just click a few weeks ahead. Let's make it in June. That'll do, add it again. Once you've got it in there, it'll stay for as long as you want it to. Um, or it can be configured that way, it's up to you. Uh, so another 25 hours from, from Annie in that week. Uh, but she might say, oh, actually, I know I've got another 40 hours there. So this is her way of communicating that change. And you'll see that these are links. And what that does is takes you to the new deliverable collaboration um, component of contract. So if I click on concept design, takes me in and you can see, uh, I haven't hit submit yet, but once I've hit submit, that remaining hours of Annie's and the actual hours will change. So let me just demonstrate that. So I've changed the remaining and I've, I've um, put in 25 hours and I'm gonna submit that. I'll just click that link again. And you can see now we've got the variance there. So um, project managers will be able to view that that's what Annie's forecasting. They can then override it and say, nah, -uh, you're only allowed to have another 15 and pull it back to the 40. Um, that then, if I just go back to the 25, it wasn't 25, but we got a variance. That then flows back into the schedule for effort. So you'll see here the remaining hours, uh, 25, and the algorithm will update that um, in all intents and purposes, because uh, June is closed. I think it's uh, outside of that range. But yeah, the, the hours have come in here. You've got the variance now that's going to be to contract, got 50 hours instead of 40. So the resource plan updates to be 50 based on that communication flow. So this is the work, this is the sort of virtuous loop back into updating this schedule from where it started as an estimate to being updated post contract. Um, equally, as we get to the end of uh, July and we look to invoice against this particular claim, um, the timesheet hours. <laughs> should be in here. <laughs> uh, the timesheet hours would be a, a view in here. I don't know where that's gone um, to, to claim against. And so uh, below this screen somewhere, there should be a, a list of all of the hours that have been booked against this particular job. And then I can uh, claim those in the quantity complete or the percent complete. Again, if it was milestone, I can type at the top here and just say, we, we've finished it. Or it's, this is the initial claim, claim on commencement. And we hit save and it updates every line item below to 20%. So you don't have to go through and add every one on a, on a milestone claim. Equally where that button has gone, I don't know, but when it does exist, there's a claim time that you can just click and it, if it's a schedule of rates, it'll just automatically put the hours you're claiming against the relevant people in the invoice value side of the equation. And uh, uh, when, I, when I click new document on this, just to demonstrate one other part about this. So what, what we've done is, doesn't matter what contract type you're using, you're still always going to need an effort estimate to work out what to price the job. So even if you're pricing a lump sum job, you'll then have documents that you'll create outside of Unify or you can use Unify for proposals, potentially we do. Um, and then obviously when you invoice, that just, uh, if I change the depth here to level one, essentially then build in this to be a typical lump sum based structure for an invoice. And so even though there's hours behind this, no one's gonna, the client's not gonna see that. Um, you've got your 20% claim that you've made against the concept design. Um, the rest of it's coming in automatically so that you're showing a full contract value. The 53 is what you actually agreed to in the contract. And that's what's gonna display on the invoice when, when you send it to them. So um, you know, that's how you handle having detail in the one screen, but being able to 
you know, pivot that information to present it in different ways, depending on the audience you're trying to, to show it to. And so I've now got my invoice out the door. I've got my actuals. I've got my uh, schedule. I can then look at earn value with that information. So if I go to the earn value uh, sub nav, um, you've, you can see that the, the concept design um, deliverable is there. Uh, we've got the actual costs that have come in. We've got the original contract value. Um, my screen, because I zoomed in, is a bit, I need to zoom out a bit and increase the resolution. You can see that there's the comments thread here too. So I can click on that and I get into this and it might have Annie's comment around why the hours increased. There's a bit of luck. And you'll also be able to link documentation here, both here and traditionally through Unify documents where you can then view draft drawings, for example, and have some sort of evidence of what it is that you're claiming as an earned value. Um, let's click the up arrow there and I went back to the earned value uh, nav. And so uh, through these deliverables, um, I think I must add the, the depth thing on to, to oh, the incomplete to filter that out. But um, you've got these stage gate milestones that you can then track against. And so even though like concept design has like 120 hours, we'll look at where we're at in terms of this you know, milestone progress that you've got here. Again, you design these, this is just what we've used for the webinar. Um, and so if someone says it's issued for review, again, you could look at the comments and see if that's the case. Um, but when you hit save, that'll give them an earned value for that particular um, profile. Uh, and you can see that that earned value is quite substantial considering um, it's only the first milestone. And then as you get to the second one, you'd say issue for approval and the earned value profile changes again and then so on and so forth with project engineer and it changes again. Now you can override those if you wanted to um, change that. And you can also set it up that you can't override those and you can lock them. Um, but basically now we've got an earned value profile against an actual cost profile and a schedule cost profile, which is that phased effort that we had in the schedule screen before. Um, that then gives us the ability to generate these types of statistics and, and the, the graphs on performance. Um, and because actuals were in June, we weren't expecting to do anything in June. And we've also progressed in June. We're, we're well ahead of schedule because um, schedule hasn't even started yet. Uh, and obviously cost performance looks pretty good too. Um, so at this point in time, there shouldn't have been any money spent. We've spent 4,000, but we actually earned $10,000 worth of our $12,000 budget already. Um, and that's what that's telling us there. Again, all started from the estimate and everything from the estimate has flowed through to this progress. Uh, we then go through the process again, people timesheet, they write comments, you do your invoice, you update your schedule, you update your own value, you get your reports. And you know that reporting isn't just uh, limited to project by project. So then once you're happy with um, that methodology and everyone's embedded into doing that methodology in your business, you can start to get um, resource profiles. So if I um, this is what it was before the webinar began. If I click view, we're just looking at the virtuous webinar project here. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> the hours should have updated from the resource plan through here. Um, reports are still, still being worked on the last part of the puzzle. Uh, but equally, what was going to demonstrate after that is this is just a portfolio report. Did I, I think it pushed, oh yeah, they, they, the second phase was out. You're right, Karen. You're right, it was beyond September. I did it to December. Thank you for that. That's better. Um, and rem remember we re-baseline, so the budget has that as well. So this is the uh, detailed design plan for the virtuous ERP webinar. That didn't exist when this webinar started. We, you saw me put that through. And then whatever other projects that Bernard, Jane, and anyone else in the business are working on are going to be there. And based on their standard hours, so people have a standard hours profile, um, eight hours a day, four hours a day if they're part-time or, or however you structure your business, uh, it'll then calculate who's over allocated. Now in this instance, they're having a bit of a lark. They're only doing 24 hours a month uh, through June, July, August, September. Uh, so there's no one over allocated in this particular uh, deployment. 
but you can get the concept as more projects are onboarded and you do the same process, it builds up and you just get to run these reports. Uh, there's four reporting methods in, in Unify. Uh, the embedded dashboards is one. Um, there will be portfolio resource planning dashboards over time um, and project specific, they're all coming in slowly. Uh, but there is a portfolio resource planning dashboard of sorts, the old table based where you can see you know, what projects you have actually resource planned against and which ones you can't and that's a, or haven't. And that's a sortable data grid. So if I click on budget hours, for example, these are all the projects that don't have a resource plan. Um, and same with remaining, these are the ones that don't have anything left uh, for them to do. And uh, there's your timesheet hours coming in there and we'll have some charts coming in over time for that. Uh, then there's the uh, reporting services reports, which this one is, um, which we've demonstrated in a separate webinar. Uh, then there's the document system uh, that you can use to generate invoices and the like. And then there's your Power BI that you can build your own. And so from that one set of data, you will have a budgeted revenue. Uh, you'll have a budgeted cost from the cost rates. You can create um, cost contracts as well for any purchasing you do need to do that's not time-based. Uh, you'll have a budgeted profit and a budgeted margin. You'll have actual revenue and cost and an actual profit, forecast remaining and an act completion, all being driven from that process that we just went through. Um, so no extra information required. Um, equally, you can resource plan um, and have a profile over time that uh, pushes that information in to each person and their projects and whether they're over or under allocated month by month or um, if I change that to columns and drill in, it'll put, put the uh, extra months in rather than it just being used. So the first drilling went from Andy and showed all of his projects, et cetera. Uh, this one will push out the date, so it should do. Ugh. Okay, I think I clicked it too many times. <laughs> um, this one here shows actual utilization. Uh, okay, I'll come back to that in a minute, Bob. Um, so you can see you can have a target uh, for revenue. So this is coming from cash flow. Um, this is coming from timesheets. And this is uh, basically how you're performing against your targeted cash flow by office location. Um, and against the target here from an actuals perspective, what your utilization is from actual perspective, billable leave, et cetera. And then this one here again comes into the resource planning again and disappeared on me. Um, so, uh, so yeah, those uh, dashboards for, uh, able to be downloaded from the Power BI dashboards um, section of our website, um, but also you have the ability to go in and build your own versions of these and get them into the, into the structure that you want. All of the data though, the main part of this webinar is that all the data that generates these reports is coming from um, that one template that we created at the beginning for the estimate. And um, everything else flows from, flows from there. Uh, now the question was, can you see the triggers for the traffic light report? So just confirming you meant these things, is that correct? Okay, uh, so um, you can see the outcome of, I'm in the wrong deployment, sorry. Let me just go back to one that'll have stuff. Uh, in the details section of a project, so I'm in Charters Towers here, um, you'll see the outcome of the overall red, amber, green statuses here and what's driving them there in terms of the trigger of what's causing it to go red for each of these components. We do need to update that with some of the new earned value um, information. We haven't embedded that. These are still the Unify 16 metrics that are, are driving that. So they'll stay, those metrics will stay, but we'll add in additional ones around uh, cost and time, looking at, and, and WIP and schedule, looking at earned value statistics for those. Um, the, there's basically a, um, cacophony of, of metrics sitting underneath contract that the algorithm goes through. And the, the largest one that relate to it going in a certain color is pulled out and displayed here. And so the reason we don't list all of that is that PMs don't game, game the system in some way and try and manipulate the, the thing. They probably, if they use it regularly, will learn 
what triggers them anyway, because they'll see the triggers here. But this does try to explain why um, certain uh, metrics are going uh, red, amber, green. And uh, yeah, if you go and put baseline dates in uh, or put for actual forecast dates in, then that would change. Uh, but it might change to being red, but with another indicator of why it's red. So it might be a, a list of things that you need to do. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where it's displayed. Then the overall rating for the project, um, essentially there's two. Uh, EXT is external, internal is INT. Um, they're looking at it from the perspective of, um, you know, a client is paying for all of this and wants it done on time. So how are we going on budget and on time um, is the red and then the green is, but we have a contract and we want to know how that's going. So that's all of the profit, resource scheduling and WIP. So these four here relate to the internal and then these ones here relate to the external element of the project is how it works. Um, but then I actually had some red, amber, greens on the Power BI. That's entirely definable by yourselves. And so if you don't like our ones, you can build your own and you would design your own uh, logic. Now in our template file, it'll have the um, conditional logic in there so you can read it. So, so these thresholds here that are making it go red um, are in the file and they're defined there and you can look them up. So. Um, and then if you don't like it, you can change the, the thresholds for when things change. So going back to our um, slide here, hopefully um, through that process, you saw how when we did our estimate, that was the driver for um, everything that came on afterwards. If I close this project without going to a post award phase, just explain that one because I didn't in the demonstration. Um, if I filter my portfolio, if I filter my portfolio to submissions, these are all the jobs I'm bidding for at the moment. And if I lose them, I mean, we never would, would we? But, you know, if I did, you can either click here and click life cycle phase to change them to a, a lost phase, um, which will be at the bottom, uh, canceled or lost. Um, and then if you do that, uh, what, it, what the system will do is an embedded report in here called submissions. And it will track when lost, but equally you can build those cyber logics again in, um, your Power BI or there's uh, Microsoft uh, SQL reporting services reports on that too. So uh, this change here depends on when jobs are won and how much they're worth and when they're lost and how much they're worth and it will go up and down depending on what happens during those periods. It's all automatic, it's all based off that original estimate that we created. And so there's no more work that needs to be done um, to actually get the data for it. It's just what does the report look like? Uh, cash flow, we saw how that was developed based on milestones, effort schedule based on a, a, a monthly schedule uh, for each person allocated to those deliverables. Uh, time sheeting against that effort schedule, remaining hours being changed in that time sheet. Invoicing, um, profitability coming out of that, and you saw the dashboards with the profitability. Earned value being assessed against how you've done in the time sheet and against the effort schedule. And then that updates the cash flow and the effort resource planning schedule again. And we just keep doing that until the project is finished. Any questions? Thanks for that catch, Karen. <laughs> Gonna need to. <laughs> Get some uh, free Unify goodies your way, I think, for the help you've given me on these um, on these webinars. Um, so that's where we started. Everything's been done in the contracts module. Uh, once we click in on a particular contract, uh, all of the subnav options are there to drive the performance management of this particular contract, um, which then flows through to those reports. So I'll stop the recording now. And if anyone wants to ask any questions, 